What's up, Toe Wheels kids? It's June, week four. This is the last week before July, and I know you might be like, uh, it's kinda halfway through summer break, but don't sweat it. Don't sweat it, guys. I hope you guys are doing great, and I cannot wait to dive into today's lesson. I hope you all had a great week last week. Let's jump in and see what we've got going on. First, we've got a super fun game. You guys get involved. See how you can do, okay? See if you can hold up. I'll see you guys after that game, and we're gonna jump into today's lesson. I'll see you there. So today's lesson is another great lesson on confidence, right? It's another famous story from the Old Testament that maybe you have heard of before, okay? It involves a prophet and other prophets and wood and water and fire and I don't know. I don't know if you guys got this one or not. You might have heard it at Sunday school or here before as well. We are going to dive into that lesson. but. Before we dive in, let's talk about confidence, guys, right? There's a lot of things that people didn't think we could do until somebody did it, right? For example, flying. No one thought we could fly until the Wright brothers invented the airplane, or going to space, or tightrope walking, or anything crazy, right? There's so many things that people are doing on a daily basis that we never thought we could do before. So that's what we're talking about today. You see, we're, having, we're talking about having confidence in things that we don't think we can do, that we don't think can happen, that doesn't seem like it should work out, but God has a plan, okay guys? So we're going to jump into that. Let's check out Haley's verse one last time for this month, and you guys see if you can do it from memory. I will see you guys there after that verse. Hey guys, it's Haley, and I am back for the month of June with a brand new memory verse. 
So this month we're going to be in Psalms 27, 13. So let's go ahead and start our brand new words and motions. So first part is I will remain confident of this. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna take a fist and slap it on onto our palm. So we're remaining, I remain confident you're very confident with your hands on your hips of this. And we're just going to nod our head. So it's, I remain confident of this. All right, that's our first part. Our second part is, I will see, we're going to put our little binoculars on. So I will see the goodness of the Lord. Make real big thumbs up. So I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. So make real big arm motions because we are in the land of the living. So second part is I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Psalms 27, 13. Great job, you guys. Bye. All right, guys. Today we are jumping into the lesson. Like I said, we're talking about fire, prophets, anything, everything. So much going on. If you guys know the story, it's the story of Elijah and the prophets of Baal. Okay? So we're going to jump into that story. If you don't know the background here, basically, after the time of Judges that we talked about last week, remember, with Gideon, uh, there was a new, a new period in the, in the history of Israel, and that was the time of kings, right? We can name a lot of famous kings. King Saul, King David, King Solomon. But here's the thing. The kings had their ups and downs. Some were great, like King David, and some were not. Some fell short, and some even started some pretty wicked practices. And that's where we get to meet this evil king, Ahab. Ahab was not a good king. And he actually started a temple to Baal, one of the foreign gods, right? A little g god that isn't actually real. That isn't our real god, the one and only god in heaven, okay? It was a fake god. It was an idol. And it was not pretty, okay? And then there comes Elijah. Now, Elijah is not a fan of what's happening because Elijah is a prophet of God, the one true God. And King Ahab is telling his people that there's more than one God and they can worship whoever they want. So Elijah confronts the king, and the king actually sends a group of prophets to Elijah. So Elijah is confronting Ahab. And the king, well, he isn't a big fan of it. So to see all of this goes down, guys, we're going to be in 1 Kings 18, 18, guys. So flip on over to your Bibles. It's about that much there. We're going to be in chapter 18 of 1 Kings, verse 18. I hope that's easy enough to find. I'm going to flip on over one page, and we're going to read what's going down between Ahab and Elijah. So it says, I make no trouble for Israel, Elijah replied. You and your family are the troublemakers. For you of you or refuse to obey the commands of the Lord and have worshipped the images of Baal instead. So, not pretty. First of all, saying that to a king was not a good idea back then. The king was mad. But Elijah challenged the king, and they prepare for this showdown, okay? So, 850 prophets of Baal, right? False prophets who told lies and made up things, they went to go challenge one prophet from God. So 850 versus one. Now, in normal circumstances, we'd be like, wow, that can't be pretty. But Elijah knows what he's doing. So we're going to jump down to verse 21, and it says, Then Elijah stood in front of them and said, How much longer will you waver, hobbling between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal is God, then follow him. But the people are completely silent. So Elijah's like, come on, you're going back and forth. You're not telling us the truth. You're changing your mind. I challenge you guys to a duel, right? And so he presents this challenge, and he says, build an altar to your God, and let's see whose God shows up. So jumping down into verses 23 and 24, then it says, now bring two bulls. The prophets of Baal may choose whichever one they wish and cut it into pieces and lay it on the wood of their altar, but without setting fire to it. And I will prepare the other bull and lay it on the wood on the altar, but not set fire to it. Then call on the name of your God, and I will call on the name of the Lord. The God who answers by setting fire to the wood is the true God. And all the people agreed. So Elijah's like, here's what we're going to do. You're going back and forth. 
you guys aren't, you're up to no good, so we're going to have a challenge. We're going to build an altar, right, which is uh, basically a way for them to sacrifice back then. So they're going to build a big altar, and then they're going to put some wood on it, and then they're going to prepare their sacrifice, but they're not going to set it on fire. They're not going to set it on fire. They're going to let their god set it on fire. And Elijah says, whoever's god sets it on fire, that's the true god. And so everybody's like, yeah, 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 yeah. We got this, we got this. And so the prophets bow go first. Let's just say it's kind of embarrassing. Uh, verse 26 opens up and it says, So they prepared one of the bulls and placed it on the altar. And they called on the name of Baal from morning until noontime, shouting, Oh, Baal, answer us! But there was no reply of any kind. They danced, hobbling around the altar, and they had made. It wasn't pretty, guys. It wasn't pretty. Elijah began to be like, what? Where's your God, guys? Huh? He told them, like, what's going on? You got nobody here for you. What's going on? But we see Elijah goes next. Not only does he go next, he takes it to the next level. He puts the wood on the altar, and then he dumps gallons and gallons and gallons of water on it. Right? He puts a whole trench of water around it, and then he prays to God, okay? So not only is this wood soaking wet, but, you know, it, there's no way. There's no way it's going to light on fire. But we check here, and then verse 36, it says, The usual time for offering the evening sacrifice, Elijah the prophet walked up to the altar and prayed, O Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, prove today that you are God in Israel, and that I am your servant. Prove that I have done all this at your command. O oh Lord, answer me. Answer me so that these people will know that you, O oh Lord, are God and that you have brought them back to yourself. So Elijah gets on his knees and prays this one simple prayer. Remember, the prophets of Baal had been yelling and, and dancing and calling out to their God all day with nothing. Elijah says this prayer, and in verse 39 it says, Immediately the fire of the Lord flashed down from heaven and burned up the young bull, the wood and the stones and the dust, even licked up all the water in the trench. And when all the people saw it, they fell face down on the ground and cried, The Lord, he is God. Yes, the Lord is God. So God answered Elijah's prayer. God did the impossible. And in turn, everybody around there believed in him. Because God did what seemed impossible. So let's worship that God who does what's impossible. And then we're going to jump in and finish up the lesson. So, I'll see you guys after that. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you You are here Working in this place I worship you I worship you You are way maker Miracle worker Promise keeper Light in the darkness My God that is who you are You are way maker Miracle worker Promise keeper Light in the darkness My God That is who you are You are here Touching every heart I worship you I worship you You are here Healing every heart I worship you I worship you You are here And turning lives around I worship you I worship you You are here Mending every heart I worship you 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 I wor
worship you Cause you are way maker, miracle worker Promise keeper, light in the darkness My God, that is who you are You are way maker, miracle worker Promise keeper, light in the darkness My God, that is who you are 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 Even when I don't see it, you're working Even when I don't feel it, you're working You never stop, you never stop working You never stop, you never stop working Even when I don't see it, you're working even when I don't feel it, you're working You never stop, you never stop working You never stop, you never stop working and Even when I don't see it, you're working Even when I don't feel it, you're working You never stop, you never stop working You never stop, you never stop You are way maker, miracle worker Promise keeper, light in the darkness My God, that is who you are You are way maker, miracle worker Promise keeper, light in the darkness My God, that is who you are You are way maker, miracle worker Promise keeper Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. So guys, here's the thing. There's going to be times in our lives that we, we just don't think it can happen. Where something is going on and it just doesn't seem like anything in the world can make it any better. It seems like God is distant, He's not there, and there's nothing He can even do if He was there. But that's not true. This story right here shows us that we can have confidence in God to listen to our prayers and to show that He is good. So next time you run into a problem, next time you run into something that's scary, that's hard to deal with, that doesn't seem like it can be solved, remember that God will do whatever it takes to show that He loves you. So I'm going to land with this question, guys. What seems impossible to you? What's going on in your life right now that seems impossible, that there's no way God can overcome it? Maybe it's you're stressed about starting school in the morning. Maybe you don't know if you're going to, you know, make the new sports team as you move up grades. You're nervous about the new people that are going to be around you. Maybe your family is sick or somebody in your family is hurting or going through something. Maybe you're going through something. But whatever it is, at the end of the day, remember that God truly cares about you. And He wants what's best for you guys. So, I'm going to wrap this story up. I will see you guys next week as we jump into July. I hope you guys have a great week. Can't wait to see you there. With that, I'll see y'all later.